Hey YouTube, it's Ryan from Red Panda Recording. Today we're going to look at using tape and console emulation on our stereo stems or submixes as a way to get an analog vibe or tone going uh, early on in the mixing process. And we're going to kind of see how that works for us. So let's take a quick look at this session here. Okay, so if we take a look at this session, um, this is was recorded about 10 years ago. Uh, it's a band called The Major Leans. This track is called Young Man's Game. And since I was involved in recording this, I know that this was recorded essentially preamps straight into the interface, straight into the computer. So, you know, it wasn't run to tape. It wasn't uh, recorded in a uh, studio with a console. It was a pretty bare bones uh, recording. Uh, that said, I know that in looking at mixing this, um, I'm going to want an analog vibe uh, to match the track and kind of, you know, match the tone of, you know, other, you know, music that this would kind of live with. So I don't have any plugins going on in my individual instruments or groups. Um, see here, my snares going into a snare aux, feeding the drum aux, um, you know, that's catching the other drum instruments. Um, I have some reverbs and things set up. i they're not active. There's nothing, nothing being sent to them. Um, so I have all my sort of everything of my routing for my template is brought in. I have a scratch vocal, single keys. I've got some electric guitars here in red, um, two bass tracks. Pretty straightforward uh, all the way coming down to the mix bus. And you can see I have all the plugins uh, muted. So we're monitoring here off of the print track. Okay. Okay. So if we jump up to the top of the mix here, um, we're going to see eight stereo stems. So drum stem, perk stem, bass stem, um, all the kind of usual suspects. Uh, and these eight stereo stems are feeding my mix bus. So everything's coming in here. It's hitting the vi virtual mix rack from Slate, which I have the mix bus from the virtual console collection. And I have the Slate virtual tape. Okay, so it's hitting those two plugins and then the output of these eight stems feeding the mix bus, that's the mix, print it, you're done, right? Okay, so here we go. Okay, so if we take a look over here on this group, which is uh, all stems, so not surprisingly, it is uh, composed of my eight stereo stems, uh, but here's the important part. So in the attributes, I have follow globals turned off. So my rules for this group, I have volume and mute pan turned off, so if I want to make small level tweaks or mute a group, I can do that without it affecting the other stems. Um, but here's the important part. Insert A, insert E. I have the controls and the bypass. I have on both A and E, I have those linked. So what that means is if I make one instance active, they all go active. So same thing with the tape. Okay, I'll turn that off. Now, if I go one level deeper on that, so what that means is here. So let's say I'm listening to this. Okay, great. So that's the sound of this going through the Brit 4KE or SSL 4000. Um, now let's say I said, hmm, I wondered what this would sound like if I was running this into an API console. So if I flip this up to API, notice I'm on the drum stem, but because of those attributes I've set up for the group, see here if I look at on the lead vocal, you'll see the same thing has happened. So any change I make to any of these parameters is all going to match in all eight instances. Okay, so now maybe I want to hear the uh, API. Okay, or maybe I want to hear um, a Neve emulation. Okay, and so on, and you get the idea. Now, a uh, quick side note. Um, I know a lot of you are probably saying, uh, you can do this within the Slate plugins itself. Uh, it has the group function, so I could do the same exact thing. 
Um, I'm choosing to do this on the Pro Tools level. And the reason I'm doing that is uh, regardless of if you're using Slate, if you're using Waves, maybe product by Brainworks, Universal Audio, et cetera, uh, regardless of the plugin that you're using, since you're controlling this at the Pro Tools level, um, it's gonna affect any plugin. Okay, so back to where we were. So the reason I'm doing this is I really wanna think about it again. What am I trying to do? Okay, I'm taking a mix and I'm thinking about if I had these tracks and I brought it into a studio and I dumped it out into eight stems, stereo stems, so 16 channels, and I ran it through a console and then was gonna mix through that console. The great advantage of this is there's not a lot of studios that you can go to where you can go from a 16 channel Neve to a 16 channel Trident to a 16 channel API to, you know, both SSLs. So you get to audition different consoles to kind of see what works the best for your track. Okay. Now the great other great thing about this is you can always go back later and see if you still make the same decision uh, when you're further along in the mix. Okay, so we've got the basic setup, we've got the concept of it, and the sort of why. And so now let's talk about the what. What are we listening for? So when I go through this process, um, it's very subtle, but there are differences. And what I do is I usually listen to it about three times in a row. And why three times in a row? Well, first pass through, I might listen for, you know, what's happening on the low end. Is it tightening up? Is it getting sort of fat and wide and gooey? Um, what's the interplay between the bass drum and the bass guitar or the kick drum and the bass guitar? Uh, what's going on in the low end? And, and what do I like for my track? Okay, so that's the first pass through. Uh, the second pass through, I'm going to look on the other end. I'm going to look on the high end, okay? So what's going on in the top of my snare drum? Uh, is it, you know, kind of, they're more of a snap? Uh, is it a duller? What's going on in my cymbals? Uh, if I had a vocal in, you know, I might be listening for how is this affecting the sibilance of the vocal or the air of the vocal? So those kind of things. So the second pass, I'm gonna look and listen to the high end. And then the third pass, I'm going to listen to what's going on in the middle. On a track like this, I'm going to listen to the guitars. And again, if I had the vocal in, um, the interaction between the guitars and the vocal, since they, you know, frequently they're, they're fighting for the sort of same frequency range. And I'm going to listen through those, so maybe three, four passes, uh, just a small excerpt like this, and um, just kind of see what suits my ear. So I'm going to play this section and I'm just going to scroll through some of the different settings and, you know, we'll see if we can hear a difference here. Okay, we'll start on the uh, SSL. <laughs> Okay, so hopefully you got a little bit of a sense of that. And if you're not hearing too much, maybe scroll back, listen through it again. Um, these can be very subtle differences, but again, what we're trying to do is sort of put ourselves in a direction of where we think the final mix is gonna be. Uh, the other thing I should have said, uh, things to listen for, uh, depth. So are certain instruments or frequencies coming forward? And also the sense of width, because it's gonna affect different frequencies differently. So again, that was back to what we were talking about, you know, is the low end, is it kind of feeling wide and tubby or is it kind of tightened up, you know, th those kinds of things. Um, 
Okay, so that covers the console sound, and then now we can go through the same process. Uh, if I can open the tape here, um, the same thing. And in my tape, um, just to show you the full settings, uh, for this example, I've got the noise reduction all the way down, uh, the wow and the flutter is at 25%. Um, actually, I'm just gonna take that down to zero. Uh, Hiss auto mute is on, okay, so. I'm going to just close that. So the three things I'm going to be looking at while we play this is the tape type, the tape, uh, sorry, the machine type, the tape type, and the speed. Those are going to give me the three different colors. And, you know, with each having two possibilities, I've got a, kind of a few things to sort through here. So same thing. I'm going to play the same section. Um, I'm going to flip through some of the settings, and we're going to see same thing. Listen for these changes, low end high end, uh, front to back is something coming forward, um, what's going on there, something wider, something more narrow, you know, let's just listen and see what we come up with. Okay, so hopefully we heard some things going on there. Um, I noticed, especially towards the end here with the FG9 uh, tape type, I was really getting the snap of the snare and uh, the hi-hat was really coming forward and towards me. Now, I don't know if that's where it, it's gonna end up, but for right now, I'm gonna leave it there because at least that kind of gives me, um, you know, just a, a little bit of teeth or aggression on the drums right out of the gate here. And, and I kind of like that. We'll see if that ends up happening. Okay, so in summary, I'm going to turn off the console and tape emulation. We're going to start with the mix flat, add in the console, add in the tape, and let's see what we came up with. Okay, there we have it. I'd uh, really love to hear your comments about how you guys out there are using tape and console emulation in your workflow. Please hit like and subscribe. And you can head over to redpandarecording.com to find out more about the studio and the work that we do. Till next time, take care and be productive. Mm -hmm.